Hello, it's Tatami. Welcome to my diary where I talk about whatever I want to. And today I'm going to talk about looters, rioters, protesters, and why it somehow takes a combination of all three of those totally different types of people to get a semblance of justice. In these damn disunified states of America. I'm going to use that forever, y'all. I'm going to use that forever because it is proving more and more true every day. Who knows where the fuck this is going at this point. It's a wild ride, isn't it? It's pretty fun. It, 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 you know, if you weren't living in the dead middle of it, uh, you know, if you weren't in the middle of the sinking ship, but at the same time, there's that sense of satisfaction. <sighs> you know, America, she was a hard, she's a hard one to love. You wanted to, because she was so beautiful. Um, but it's been an abusive relationship, so... You know, it's like when they when they spill the fire on themselves by accident. Like, you saw that coming. We saw it coming, didn't we? We knew. We saw this coming. So let's talk about the looters first. Because we know these are not civil rights activists. It's, in fact, shocking to me how shocked people are that there are looters, that there are people taking advantage of this chaotic situation to try and better themselves, put themselves one up. Especially uh, considering if what was the news last week was video footage, drone footage of miles and miles of cars lined up at the food bank. 40 million unemployed, 2 million more this week, 30 million more that week. It's a new record of unemployment. Everybody is on unemployment. That was literally like not two, three weeks ago. And now we are shocked and disgusted and blaming civil rights activists for the class warfare that's being wrought right there. Because see, everyone's like this... The small businesses, but not the small. You guys are out here doing it to small business? And I'm like, honey, whoever took from that small business, I assure you, does not ha themselves have any kind of business. They have nothing right now. They are even lower on the totem pole. To them, the fact that you own a pawn shop is you doing pretty good for yourself, aren't you, honey? You doing great, aren't you? That's what they're thinking. But they, see, they're not thinking like this because they we can't think on the levels of poverty. Everybody has to be a gentleman to prove that they are worthy of life. And the fact that we have in the United States people who are scrounging, bottom feeding, and we don't think there is a root cause issue that needs solving now is mind boggling to me. We are calling on their honor when they called on the honor of the federal government not a few weeks ago and were told to eat shit and die. We're told to go work at Uber and get some COVID. We could have had it all eradicated had nobody had it, all been alive and well and dandy singing Yankee Doodle together, but instead we were all told to like, whatever, whatever happens to you happens to you. That's what we were told. So we have um, out-of-staters, people driving over state lines to get to a good, good old-fashioned, um, you know, protest so they can use some of the chaos and get in there. And, uh, you know, it, it became obvious that these were just looters who had nothing to do with the protest, especially because, I mean, not only are they not participating in the protests, but they are um, not even where the protest is. They're just banking on the fact that there's shit tons of cops somewhere else so that there's a good chance that they can just get in here and set a fire and create a little mayhem, hit, hit up somewhere else while the police come here to solve this mystery and mayhem. So, you know, it's just mind-boggling to me that we're not seeing that as a class issue, as a poverty issue, um, because looting happened, uh, if you'll recall, maybe you do not, in southern Italy about two months ago. Uh, they, during the pandemic, during their lockdown, they were not getting funding for whatever reason. 
and they started having organized looting sprees at different popular um, grocery stores. At different grocery stores that they could hit up, they started making up, you know, little sessions on social media so that they could all come together and raid at the same time and maybe get some food because they were hungry, because they needed something, and they figured they can't stop all of us let's just go get some food. And the police were there to try and stop them at some of them. Some other ones, they got away with it really well. And, you know, people were obviously documenting it. The point is, is the looting was going to happen regardless of this. Believe you me, I believe firmly the looting was like a month away, maybe two. That's my honest opinion. But the looting is always going to happen when there's chaos. We talked about that also when I made the video about corporations looting the U.S. Treasury about a month and a half ago. That's one of my least, the, my most disliked videos. Absolutely. <laughs> Apparently people don't like hearing that corporations is looting when they get all these bailouts for shit they don't need after record sales for a decade. They get a bailout within a week, a month, but we don't get a bailout. But then they're shocked that there's there's looters. Of course. Of course there's looters. Of course there's looters. Y'all, I don't even understand what is the conversation here. Honor? Where's the honor? Who honored these people? I heard a lot of them were young people. I mean, I heard college kids didn't get, and college kids, youth, young adults who are out of their homes taking care of themselves. I've been out since 18. So it's like, the, the idea that these people didn't get a bailout when they're the most likely to, you know, of many of them are very likely to be on their own to supporting themselves because there's it's becoming less and less likely that your parents are going to be able to help you in much of any helpful capacity with getting through college how expensive college is for so many people or they're they're living on loans it's a dangerous situation overall so this is really it's just i don't understand what we're discussing there's looters of course there's looters do those looters have anything to do with the protests no they do not Next, we have the rioters. Very interesting concept. Been seeing a lot of interesting footage. As I've noted, the, the, the looting can lead to rioting because of setting fires in places and creating mayhem in places, setting stuff up and places up, situations up by breaking windows and, you know, coming in waves or something like that. There's lots of different ways to be doing these types of things. Um, but rioters is kind of a different breed. We do have people who are obviously here to create some chaos, here to destroy the system, here to burn down the infrastructure, here to create a mess, here to put some fear behind people's asses. I'll be honest, I'm here for it. I'm here for it because this this system needs to be rebuilt. But I understand people are scared. I understand they thought that the revolution was gonna be just on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know what people thought was going to happen, y'all. What did people think was going to fucking happen when shit hit the fan, when people started getting really hungry, really restless, really antsy? It's just thing after thing after thing. The mainstream media is like just manipulative as fuck with people's emotions, bringing people on roller coasters of outrage after this, after that. And it's all kind of just been escalating the last few months. It's all just been a good horror story for the mainstream media, who's of course playing its games with like p manipulating the political sphere. And then it's with the medical, what people think about like the coronavirus. And then it's what people think about civil rights because of course they've only been focusing on looters and rioters and not really on the protests and the events that spark this type of shit every damn time. Those never get addressed. The underlying issues never get addressed. The fact that people are starving out here and willing to risk their lives stealing other people's stuff, who are willing to risk their lives defending other people's stuff, is crazy. It's fucking crazy. But instead of addressing this system that has us squabbling and at each other's necks like animals, like dogs, we are, are blaming it on other people. We are blaming it on this, the small percent of people willing to risk their lives to loot something and set a fire. It only takes one person to loot somewhere and set a fire. So why are we acting like it's just these crazy hordes more than the protesters everywhere? No, it's very small percentage of people, very desperate people, 
And yeah, we have a lot of people in the U.S., so yeah, it's, it's, it, it kind of seems to add up. But at the same time, it, we have a very serious underlying issue here that needs addressing that so many people are trying their best best to ignore. They, are, they want to see every other thing. They want to see each individual tree instead of like the entire forest. They're out here like they will force their eyeballs to look anywhere but right here. Like right here where everything is culminated into like a big fat ugly thing that we all just have to like look at and it's just oozing out seeping out growing ever larger into every like every aspect of human society so like people who normally wouldn't panic or be feeling these effects are now feeling these effects more than they ever could because we were all the economy wasn't good we were we under here down here were all a, a paycheck away from utter destruction and i know there were articles on it like every fucking month but anyways we have the writers who there are, is evidence that some of them are likely police right? We have this issue where undercover police are running around instigating, starting things that is just clearly the police. It's so clearly the fucking police. And they're systematic, they're destructive, they're angry, um, they run when they get confronted. They don't really want to be identified because they literally just show up to kind of create mayhem, leave something that will start mayhem. Then we have the issue of not undercover police, bold faced police just creating scenes of utter destruction for no fucking reason. Uh, salute to the one guy who kneeled with the protesters, but honey, y'all find out his name and badge because I'm not sure he'll last. He's going to get sent somewhere to die soon. Oh. It's wild. The whole system is highly corrupt. But people are just sitting here, taking it, getting mad at people who aren't taking it, getting mad at people who, who are reacting so violently to a system that has been so utterly violent to them. What do you call starving people out and getting them this close to an eviction? A day from an eviction. What do you call that? Except a form of violence against people, against lower class people. And, the, and they are to sit here. And it's not even just lower class because a bunch of people in the upper echelons are now getting into funds that perhaps they hadn't uh, wanted to get into either. Most of us are out here. We're the 99% for a reason because we're not actually, there's there's only a few people with all the, the, big, the big cheese, y'all. There's only a few of them. So it's just like, Meanwhile, we have everybody getting richer. <laughs> Fucking, what was his name? Who was that millionaire who ran and spent all that cash? Was that Bloomberg? Man, I don't even remember. He got back more than what he had spent in like a month due to a tragedy. So, anyways... My point is, is that we have this issue where they are flagrantly breaking laws, flagrantly, flagrantly breaking like the Constitution, first of all, people peacefully protesting right at the Rose Garden. He finishes speaking and gets to walk to a church. And the only reason he gets to walk to that church is because they beat protesters a half hour before curfew just to clear them out and show them who's boss in Washington, D.C., and not only that, but in that group of protesters, this is this is the part I've been ta talking also about this, right? About how the U.S. is just rapidly losing its reputation, rapidly losing allies, and nobody's ever going to take it seriously again. Because why? Because every four years we could end up with somebody like this. These people are like senile if they think this is all looking really good for us on the global scale. Because when his his little um troops uh, what were they special police unit somehow something came in with their riot gear and beat the shit out of some Australian reporters y'all they beat the shit out of some Australian reporters and it was like live streaming to Australia so they all it was clear what happened they knew it happened and everything can be seen so now they're checking in on us to see what's going on. We've not lost an ally, but now we've got an ally that's highly suspicious of us and is basically no longer our friend. Again, another one. 
more. And it's not just uh, the ones who are breaking up with us, uh, obviously and clearly are doing it mentally. They're moving on, y'all. Whatever they've promised with us, they're doing it in secret by themselves now because they're just like, we can't trust these idiots. We cannot trust them with jack shit. So we are losing global, global standing rapidly. If there's anything less left to lose, we are losing it. That is where we are. And I'm, and I'm telling you right now, this is what I mean by this is interesting. This is what I mean. Honey, who checks this? We're all just waiting to see who checks this. We, we need to need to know. Where is this going, right? Where is this going? Whose job is it to pass some kind of legislation, to do some kind of legal suing, to take it up with Trump that he's flagrantly violating? Whose job is it to do something? And if this group doesn't do it, who else can do it? What is going on that he can just break any law and militarize Washington, D.C. and um, threaten to militarize the entire of the United States? For what? Might I add also, most of the protests were peaceful, including the one in Washington, D.C. These people were literally strumming the guitar uh, and singing protest songs or something and got tear gassed in the middle of that. 30 minutes before they were supposed to leave. And so it's just this type of crazy violence, crazy, he's already been doing it. He's already been breaking the laws, but now we're just having to have the whole world witness it, have him take up his little authority, do what he's gonna do, run this country into the fucking ground before, if, if it was already sinking down, we were on a sinking ship, honey, he is in the bottom basement punching holes into the bottom of the boat to make it sink faster. He does not give a flying fuck what he takes down because he's already filled his pockets and his friend's pockets and he'll use anything he can to continue to do so. So finally, we have the topic of protesters. And I think this is a very important topic, especially when it comes to the answering of questions like, you know, who checks this? <laughs> Whose job is this? Where is this going, y'all? Like, where is it going? You said this is the this is a wonderful government. It's lasted this long. It's done all these things. Yeah, honey, whose job is it to check this? So we also have people asking the question, what do people want? What do they want? I mean, besides the four people being arrested, what is all this about? Everybody's marching, Black Lives Matter. What is it about? And so that's, I think, why we need to have and encourage or find, have I encourage people to use their voice. I think it's scary for people because to become civil rights leaders, to become civil rights speakers, because we watched so many get assassinated. I think that took the wind out of a lot of people's sails, you know, and it's maintained itself for a really long time. And so... I heard, you know, that there were some people leading and, and doing and being active out there, which I think is really wonderful. I'd love to know who they are. Um, but I also think, you know, there needs to be more. It doesn't it doesn't matter if, you know, people aren't the most eloquent or the most perfect at it. I do think people raising their voices in the way they know how is very important. Um, and having people who are great speakers or are great leaders and have these great thoughts and ways of con uh, conveying them and mobilizing people is so important. So, you know, it sucks that it always has to be a tragedy that sparks these types of things off. But, you know, I think the, the other tragedies that are occur occurring are also collateral to that. You know what I mean? I think that there, when this story is told later, there's going to be need to be a more well-rounded way of explaining what happened here. Because I think, you know, we've got people mourning 100,000 dead, fearing it for themselves, angry at the government for not helping them, angry at them, uh, the situation of, you know, they're hungry, uh, they um, may be evicted. There's supposed to be mass evictions in the next few months, and landlords are getting, you know, iffy. They, they want their cash. They want their stuff back, you know? And... So we've just got a bunch of people on fucking edge, dude. And uh, naturally, there's going to be side fighting 
even as people fight upwards. And so they're going to point to the side fighting and use that as an excuse for why you don't deserve things when you're pushing upwards, pushing upwards for your rights. And that's what's really sad is that it's all being dismissed because of side fighting. It's the same thing they do with the race. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, there's black and black, black on black violence. Therefore, the cops should get to kill you guys whenever they fucking want to, even though everybody has the most violence within their own race. And white people's has been escalating over the last 10 years, while black people's has been de-escalating and uh, reducing over the last 10 years. So it's just funny who gets called out for that and who doesn't. So they're always going to be pointing to this sideline fighting. And it, it show, it's another way of making you prove your humanity, prove you're worth it. It's that class thing, especially right here. It's like, oh, all these, look at these people all just coming out. And they, of course, blame it all on black people, which, of course, a large portion of poor people are black people. A large portion of people impacted by over-policing, over-incarceration, um, keeping them in jail way longer than they should, prison, labor. All the major corporations in our country, honey, they are all using slave labor through the prison system where they are intentionally putting people... A lot of people remember, even white people, Mexican people, who have you, they are not actually always convicted guilty, right? A lot of the times they just get a plea deal and it's something like 80, 80 plus percent of people don't um, get in front of a jury. They don't see a day with, in front of their peers. They just take whatever deal they get and serve a year even though they haven't actually been convicted they haven't actually they just don't think that they can win they don't think they can pay for it they don't think they can adequately defend themselves and so th that's a huge portion of people who just take whatever lower deal they can get to be put in the system and it starts a cycle in a lot of different ways but we'll have to get into the prison system a whole nother time my point is is that you know we we have this system that is just violent against youth against uh, people of color, against black people, against uh, immigrants, <laughs> you know what I mean? Is nobody considered these things? Like, against poor people, the poor people just being demonized, told that because they're in fighting and there's, you know, all this other stuff going on. Meanwhile, we have the cops instigating, like I said, they're throwing smoke, you know, gas, chemicals into crowds. Just because, like, I've seen them video of them just dropping it in while people are peacefully walking by them. And then it starts a whole fucking thing. Or, you know, and they have very much a mentality of, like, punch first, ask questions later. Um, and it's, you know, it's really telling, of course, that they're choosing to come at this with police brutality, of all things. Um, as we fight for police brutality. But the sad thing is, is that it took a culmination of all these things just to get four murderers into jail. And I think that's the, the really the saddest part of it all is that it took all that for all that. <laughs> it really wasn't much to ask in my honest opinion. Yeah, it makes me sad that um, it's just taking all this just for a little bit of justice because there's no guarantee about what their end result is going to be. They should all get life, but <sighs> yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe life is too much, but a life for a life, in my opinion, is not too much. All right, I'll leave it at that. May your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads, and I will see you next time.